There is a lush, wild haven sloping out through the ancient moss floored forest, past clear waterways to spear the sky with peaks and glaciers. Snowfall is measured in meters, and survival means following the season's up and down rugged terrain. This is the home of the caribou. Some animals have been able to adapt to the industrialized landscape of humans. Others, not so much. There are three ecotypes of woodland caribou in British Columbia, boreal, northern mountain, and southern mountain. The southern mountain caribou live in the southeast part of the province. Southern mountain caribou eat arboreal lichen. That's the lichen that grows on tree branches in the subalpine. That's essentially all they eat throughout the winter. They live where there's very deep snow. They have big feet that allow them to support themselves. There's not a lot of free water in a cold environment in the wintertime. It's all frozen and it takes energy to heat up snow. So they're good at retaining lichen. They're good at retaining water. All of those attributes help them survive. But in the last hundred years, southern mountain caribou numbers have declined to extinction in some places and numbers are going down consistently everywhere. Moose went from being non-existent to a major part of the ecosystem at the low elevation forests. And the activities of people, the clearing of the land through logging, leads to food plants that are very good for moose. And the wolf numbers have then become tied to the moose numbers. Caribou are now an alternative prey for wolves, and the incidental predation on caribou seems to be more than what the caribou population can sustain. At the current time, those populations that are really at risk, we as a society have said we're not ready to let them go extinct. So we're taking extreme measures to prevent that last little tip over to extirpation. One measure is this maternal penning operation for southern mountain caribou near Revelstoke, designed to hold pregnant cows and keep their calves safe from predators during the first weeks of life. Northern mountain caribou face similar challenges, and so a maternal panning operation is also underway for them near Chetwin. This is the Klinziza herd. Hit last year was down to 16 before we started doing anything. And at 16 individuals, there's not very many left. If we compare that to, for example, the Burt Pine herd that's just to the south, it was about 16 not too many years ago, and now it's at one bull. So we basically consider that herd to be extirpated or gone. We are ensuring that they're transported safely from the helicopter to the pen, and then taking animal samples, blood, manure, skin, and hair. And with that, we hope to assess the health of the animals initially. We can look at normal parasite loads or normal disease exposure loads. We can look at stress hormones in hair and understand what kind of stresses populations are under. It's not uncommon to find a herd of caribou with like one or two calves in it. And it's not enough to keep the population advancing and growing and in healthy conditions. So this is what we're trying to do is protect those cows and calves so that we can try to recover the herd into a situation where it's a little more sustainable and can last on its own. The calves are critical, this is what it's all about. And then once they're at least to a stage where they can keep up with their mums and theoretically get away from predators, the whole herd will be released onto this natural calving habitat. So I think that's gonna be a very exciting day for everybody. human value, a human judgment that we want to see them there. It's a symbol that says that our environment is overall in good shape if caribou are there. There's no question in my mind that I think caribou are beautiful animals. They're a tremendous species, super interesting, and I personally want to make sure they persist everywhere. <laughs>